grade. Uh, today we are going to do a grammar lesson. So you will need your grammar workshop book and you will need a place to kind of take note of some of the things that we are going through, our answers, um, your final work, which will be practice B for this uh, lesson, can be done in a Google Doc or on paper and then send a picture to me. But I recommend you take some notes of the information that I go through so that when you review it, you can practice and have an idea. That being said, you can always come back and rewatch this video. So right now you should be in your grammar book on page 32 which is lesson seven, correcting fragments and run-ons. So if you have heard the word fragment before, then you know that it means a part of something. If there is just a fragment of um, a pie crust left on your plate, it's just a small little broken piece. So if I say that there's a fragment of a sentence, that should give you a little bit of a clue what we're looking at today. But we'll start from the top. As always, if I talk too quickly or um, you need to review a concept, you can always go back in the video. But if there's something that I bring up that you do not understand, reach out to me. Uh, you can email and I will get back to you right away and talk you through the concepts. So I'm going to start from the top and I'm going to read you through the learn section. Please follow along with me. A fragment is an incomplete sentence. This subject or predicate might be missing. To correct this kind of fragment, add a subject or a predicate. So we know that a sentence has a subject and a predicate to be complete. So it has who or what the sentence is about, and then it has the action word, the verb, that is being done. So a sentence is complete, and that's subject and predicate. Fragment bought a children's book. To correct it, to make it a sentence, we'd have to add a subject because bought a children's book is an action. What is the action word there? The simple predicate out of that complete predicate would be bought, the action word. Who bought the children's book? We have to add in that subject to make sure it's complete. My sister bought a children's book. Now I have who the sentence is about and what it is that they do. Uh, next example, the book. Now this is not an action, this is not something being done, uh, but um, it is a subject, it's something that the sentence could be about, I just need a predicate now. So I have a sentence correction here, the book is for my brother. The simple predicate of that, we've talked about, is a little trickier, would be the word is. So remember, verb is action, being, or state of being. So I could say, I wrote on the board, and wrote is a verb. I could say that I um, am hungry, which is um, a state of being. Or I could say that I am a teacher, which is being something. So that is for fragments. So like I brought up before, if you've got a broken small piece of something, um, fragments of a vase, all the little pieces that have broken off, it's not complete, it's not whole. You just have one piece of it. So you're gonna be either missing a subject or a predicate when you look at a fragment. When you read it, and it might be even easier if you read it out loud to yourself, it should be clear to you that something's not quite right. I might go through quickly in my head and miss it, but if I say out loud, bought a children's book, I know that something's missing because I don't know who did that. Next type of uh, correction that we need to make is when sentences do a little too much. This is called a run-on sentence. A run-on sentence is two complete sentences that run together. One way to correct a run-on sentence is to make two separate sentences. Another way is to make a compound sentence. We've been learning about that. So this happens a lot when you are writing and you get excited. We often will do it out loud where we'll just kind of keep talking and keep talking and it'll build on too much. But on paper, it's very hard to separate ideas if you just kind of run the sentence on as one. So the run on here, they say, is she likes to draw, she wants to be an artist. Out loud, you can almost pause and make it seem like those are two separate thoughts. But on paper, if you push all those things together, 
it's just kind of hard to read the sentence. So I got to separate them. She likes to draw. She wants to be an artist. I put a period at the end of each of those thoughts. They're two separate sentences. I could also make it a compound sentence and say, she likes to draw and she wants to be an artist. Or if you want to get even more complex, I could say, she likes to draw because she wants to be an artist and add one of those more complex, um, um, sorry, subordinating conjunctions into the complex sentence. So we're looking for fragments and we're looking for run on. So we know a sentence is complete, it has a subject and a predicate. A fragment is missing either the subject or predicate. And a run on is just too much sentence. Um, how could I say that? Sentences run together. They, they say two, but sometimes we get excited and we're putting, you know, three or four sentences on together. You might be telling me a story and you're saying, I went outside and it was dark and, my, and this and this and this, and you're just kind of building on extra things. Now, you can throw in the and, but even with that, if you build on way too much, it just runs on. That's why they call it that. You're just kind of running on and on past when the sentence should have stopped so your brain can kind of process the thought. So a sentence runs together, and that's too much. So right now, I'm going to go through practice A with you just to review that idea and to give you some examples so that when you are going through and doing practice B, you can look back at practice A and the answers and see some of those examples. So how we usually do it if we were writing these books, which you're not, do not write in the book, um, how we'd usually do it would be that you would read the sentence and then, not sentence, sorry, read the group of words, because not all of them are going to be sentences, read the group of words and then circle sentence, fragment, or run on to describe that group of words. So you're looking at each one and deciding. As I mentioned before, reading it out loud, and you're going to hear me do that, uh, can help with this because you're going to, once you say it out loud, recognize that something's off if there's something off. And it should kind of hit home a little harder if it does make sense, because you'll hear it and go, oh yeah, no, that's normal. So, number one, practice that. So I'm still on page 32. Number one, Lane Smith is an illustrator. Now, this doesn't feel like too much. I'm only given that one little thought, but do I have both subject and predicate? Let's see. Lane Smith is an illustrator. I've got Lane Smith, who's my subject, that's who this sentence is about, is an illustrator. Yep, I'm talking about uh, being, so something that she is. This would be a sentence. So number one is a sentence. Once again, this is practice A, not practice B. If you send me a document numbered one to eight with these answers, that is not the assignment for this lesson. I am going to go through this with you and then you are going to independently do practice B. So this is not the thing, this is just some practice to help you with the idea. Just clarifying one more time. Number two, the young artist. Well, this doesn't feel like too much, so I don't think it's a run on, but I feel like I might be missing something. So what am I missing? Let's just find out. The young artist. Well, that is a person, so that's something that the sentence could be about, I'd say this is the subject of the sentence. But there is no action uh, in this uh, group of words, because it's not a sentence. This is a fragment. So number two would be a fragment. It's only part of the sentence. And how could I finish that? The young artist, hmm, the young artist practiced every day, or the young artist enjoyed painting. But I have to put an action in there, a predicate for the subject to be doing. Number three, he loved to draw pictures. He loved baseball. Okay, well, I'm seeing subject and predicate, so I know that this is a sentence, so it's not going to be a fragment. But 
I feel like I've got too many things in here. He loves to draw pictures. He loves baseball. This is a run-on sentence. I'm throwing in too many ideas here. In this case, just two ideas. Um, I could say he loved to draw pictures and he loved baseball, and that would be fine, but that's not what this says. So this is currently a run-on. But we've talked about how those can be fixed. I could put a conjunction in there. Uh, it could be a subordinating conjunction, though that the one I used before, because, wouldn't work here. He loved to draw pictures because he loved baseball. Doesn't make sense. But he loved to draw pictures and he loved baseball. Would work. Number four, he is grateful to his teachers. Okay, well, I'm going to say it's not a run on. There's only one thought here. But it is, a, is it a complete thought? All right, well, my subject would be he. That's who it's about. And if I need an action word predicate, would be is. And uh, remember that here, grateful is an adjective describing how he is. So he is, I've got subject, he, predicate, is, that is a sentence. Number four is complete. All right, let's look at number five. They encouraged him, they helped him. So I've got subject predicate, they and encouraged. But I'm also seeing they and helped. I believe this is a run on. I would need to have an and. I would need to have some sort of conjunction connecting these two thoughts together to make this a sentence. So this, well, it is a sentence to make this a proper sentence to make this readable. Number five is a run on. Too many things there. Number six, so we're at the top of page 33 now. One of his teachers. Why well, not right away? That's not a sentence. And it definitely feels like something's missing. But what is missing is it subject or predicate. So one of his teachers. Well, none of these are verbs. So there's no action word in there, which means I am missing the subject. Or sorry, I'm missing. The, <laughs> I am missing the predicate, which would be the action word. Um, I have the subject, which is one of his teachers. So teachers being or the one of his teachers being the subject there. Predicates missing. This is a fragment. Just a broken off piece of a sentence. Now, could I finish that? I could say one of his teachers sent him an email or one of his teachers um, liked to read out loud. Maybe it's me. All right, number seven, tried out different art supplies. Hmm, this almost seems like this could be the end of number six. One of his teachers tried out different art supplies. That would make a lot more sense. This is also a fragment because here I only have the predicate, which is the action of trying out art supplies, but I don't know how, I don't know who's doing that. I don't have the subject for that sentence. Just a broken off piece. Number six and seven almost seem like they could fit together and they would complete each other. Let's look at the last one. Number eight. This artist has a great imagination. Well, I've got a subject, this artist, and I have a predicate, has, and there is no extra thoughts, just that one idea. I would say this is a sentence. Okay, so. This is practice A. This is some guided practice for you. I hope that you went through and took your time with me to look at each one. If you need to review them, just click back to earlier in the video and you can look through or reference back to these as an example when you are working on practice B. I wanna go through, before I, before I let you go, I wanna go through the instructions for practice B. So you are doing page 33, practice B. It is one to 10 on this page. First section, it says, make each fragment a complete sentence by matching it with the correct subject or predicate. Write the letter of the words you choose on the line. So in your Google Doc or on paper, you would write number one and then the letter for when you're matching with. Make sure it's neat enough that I can read it if you're sending me a picture. Um, if you'd like, write out the answer so that it's extra clear to me which one you mean. I would say read these out loud. You don't want to just rush through and be like, the tale of Peter Rabbit is Beatrix Potter doesn't make sense. Those words go together somehow. 
they have a connection, but that's not a complete sentence that makes sense. So, um, read through each one. Taylor Peter Rabbit, the author's name, wrote the story in a letter, was for a little boy who was sick, and Potter. Here I've got a couple that are subjects and a couple that are predicates. You're finding the accompanying subject or predicate from the other side. I would say, well, we can look at number one together. If you've watched this far, you're gonna get something a little extra. Number one says the tale of Peter Rabbit. There's no action word there. There's no predicate. This is a subject. So I'm looking for a predicate that would go with that. Number uh, A says is Beatrix Potter. That's a predicate, but it doesn't go with that one, as I demonstrated when I read it out loud. Um, B says is a well-known children's book. The Tale of Peter Rabbit is a well-known children's book. I mean, that makes sense. I'll hold on to it for a second, just in case. C, the letter. Nope, that's a subject. D, later turned the story into a book. That's a predicate. Let's try it. The Tale of Peter Rabbit later turned the story into a book. Mmm... That one does not make sense. So, based off of the only options I have, I would say that number one would be B. The Tale of Peter Rabbit is a well-known children's book. So I would write number one, B. So you're gonna go through each one and make sure they match up together and make sense. If you get to the last one, and the only one over here that you match it up with does not make sense with it, that means you've made a mistake along the way. Go back through them, read them out to yourself, and check. It is okay if you need to erase and make a correction. Now, the second part says, write each run-on sentence as a compound sentence. So these are all going to be about the same topic. They're not the same ones from up here. About the same topic, though, talking about Beatrix Potter, who wrote The Tale of Peter Rabbit. And you're going to see these run-on sentences for six, seven, and eight that you need to make into compound sentences. So you have to add in a conjunction. Beatrix Potter made the story longer. She redrew, redrew the pictures, too. Too many thoughts put in there. How would you separate it out with compound sentence? Now they don't say make it two separate ones. That's nine and 10. Number nine and 10 says, write each run on sentence as two separate sentences. So up here, you need to add in a conjunction to connect the two thoughts. Here, you need to separate the sentences entirely. So six, seven, eight, add a conjunction, nine and 10, two separate thoughts, make two separate sentences, write them out. So either you are typing them out in Google Docs or you're writing it out on paper and taking a picture to send to me. But these, number six through 10 should be written out. These you can just write number one in the letter. This one, don't just write down the conjunction you plan on using, write the whole thing out so I can see that you know where it belongs to connect those two ideas. As I mentioned before, if you have any further questions, send me an email. I will be happy to talk you through the ideas or uh, call and run through it with you one more time. You can also rewatch this video or call in to Miss Woody during the Learning Ally window uh, that is from 10 to 12 each morning. If I'm wrong on the time, no, I know I'm right. <laughs> um, you can check in with that time that was sent out on Monday with a number that you can call to talk one-on-one -on -one and get some help with the work that you're doing at home. I love you all so much and I will talk to you more later. Bye.